Content warning. The Matherson marriage contains unhealthy relationship dynamics and fictional domestic abuse. If you are in a real-life Matherson marriage, please reach out to the appropriate authorities for help. Resources you may find helpful include the Pixel Project's Domestic Violence Resource page and UN Women's International Helplines list. Resources will be linked in the video description for accessibility. Hi, I'm Morgan, and today I will be reading to you from The Matherson Marriage by Ruby M. Ayers. Chapter 17 When Matherson had gone, Lynn Ramston shut the library door and stood leaning heavily against it. Through the open window, he could hear Pansy's voice and the soft purring of the engine as the car started away. It had been a coward's work to bring her here. He dared not think that she was suffering as he was. He hated Matherson with every impulse of which he was capable. The letter Pansy had sent him the day before, he had burnt unread. What was the use of half measures? If one had got to kill a beloved creature, one sure blow was the kinder way. He stood listening till the sound of the car had died away. Then he went to the window. He might never see her again. He wondered if in time she would grow to hate him. She was proud, and he prayed with all his heart that pride would come to the rescue and save her now. He went back to his desk and tried to work, but he could not concentrate his thoughts. Pansy's face was before him always, and her tragic eyes. Had he done the right thing, what else could he have done? He understood Matherson sufficiently well to know that he would have kept his threat, and disgraced her and taken Buster away, and Pansy could not have borne it. The child came first with her, and always would. The afternoon wore on, but he could settle to nothing. A thousand times the impulse came to him came to him to write to her, to make some sort of an excuse, to offer some defense. She had trusted him, and she would think he had betrayed that trust. About five o'clock, the housekeeper came to him. Sir, won't you have some tea? Lynn looked at her and laughed. <laughs> tea, and no thanks. Her eyes grew distressed. You had no lunch, sir. You must have something. She knew that he was in trouble, but, though he had given her to understand that it was only the loss of his money, she was not convinced. And, because she was a simple, natural soul, she believed Violet was to blame. I'm sure if there's anything I can do, sir, she faltered. Lynn laid a hand on her shoulder. There's nothing. I'm all right. Don't worry. But in half an hour, she was back again, her face all smiles. A lady has come from Green Gables, sir, with a letter. She beamed as she looked at him. She was quite sure it must be a letter from Violet. And if you can spare a moment, she would like to see you, sir. She would have been amazed and not a little shocked could she have known the letter was from Pansy. She had gone straight home and written to him. Matherson had goaded her almost to madness as they drove away from Chiswell's. We shan't see much more of Ramsden, he had been his first remark. I told him you were outside in the car and he ignored me. Infernally rude, I call it. After the hospitality he's received, he might have asked you in. Pansy nerved herself to answer. Why should he, if you were talking business? I was quite comfortable. Infernally rude all the same, Matherson insisted. He's behaved abominably. What about Violet, pray? I consider he's treated her cattishly. The girl's in love with him as he meant her to be. He watched his wife covertly as he spoke, but Pansy's face showed no change. She was past minding his, his gibbs or his jibes. She was in the grip of a great despair. What had happened to Lynn? Was he angry with her? Oh, he might have come out, if only just for a moment. She wrote to him directly. She reached home and sent Joyce over with it to Chiswell's on her bicycle. She read the disapproval in Joyce's eyes, but did not care. I ask you to go because I can trust you, she told her. You can think what you like. I don't mind. But he must have that letter tonight, or I... Or I... She broke down to plead desperately. Joyce, if you really love me... I'll take it. Of course, Joyce said. She put on her hat at once and rode over to Chiswell's. I should like to speak to Mr. Ramston if he is in, she told Lynn's housekeeper. So Mrs. Gee triumphantly gave her message. The lady would like to see you, sir, if you could spare a moment. Ramston turned slowly, his face paling. Not... This is Matherson? He asked hoarsely. Oh, no, sir, nor Miss Tremaine. It's the young lady that looks after the little boy. Oh, Lynn hesitated. Please ask her to come in, he said. Joyce looked very distressed as she walked into the room and shut the door behind her. She seemed not to see Lynn's offered hand. She kept her own nervously clasped as she spoke. I suppose I should not have come, Mr. Ramsden. I hope you won't be offended, but she caught her breath on a sob. I love Pansy, too. She waited, but he did not speak, and she went on. I can't bear it if, if she's got to have more trouble. I tried to tell you weeks ago that you ought not to stay. Oh, 
Are you very angry with me? No. He stood staring down at the floor, his face white and haggard. Then he suddenly, then suddenly he looked up. Miss Lindsay, I'm leaving Chiswell's. Perhaps you know, and I shall never come back. If that's any consolation to you, I... His eyes fell suddenly on the letter she had brought, and he took a quick step forward. Give it to me, he said hoarsely. He was almost at the end of his endurance, and with sudden compassion, Joy said tremulously, Oh, Mr. Ramsden, I'm so sorry, so very sorry. Sorry? <laughs> he laughed mirthlessly. You needn't be. It's all right. It's not for myself, I mind. And Joyce knew that... And Joyce knew then that the thing she had most feared had come to pass, and that Pansy loved him. The tears were running down her face as she put the letter to his hand. If there's ever anything I can do, she faltered, and then answered, You can't. Thank you all the same. She turned to the door, and he followed. You won't tell anyone you saw me, Miss Lindsay. The sooner I'm forgotten, the better it will be for everyone. I shall not tell. She went away, wiping the tears from her eyes, and, looked, and Lynn stood looking down at Pansy's letter. He ached to open it and know what she had written, even while he knew the folly of adding to his pain. Then suddenly he tore it across and across in blind passion. Some scraps of paper fell at his feet, and he went down on his knees to pick them up. From one of them, a few words looked up at him, and Pansy's agitated writing, Don't want me any more. I shall come to you tonight. For a moment he stared at them in their pathos. Then he went out of the room and out of the house, walking blindly anywhere, to escape from his intolerable pain. He only came to himself hours afterwards, miles away from home, hatless as he had left the house, to find that it was quite dark. He struck a match and looked at his watch. Past eleven! By that time he got... By the time he got back, Pansy would have gone, if it had ever really been her intention to come to him at Chiswell's. He had to pass the Matherson's place on his way, and he stood for some moments looking up the unlighted windows before he went on along the silent road. She would never forgive him after this, at any rate, no matter how loyally she, loyally she had hitherto believed in his love for her. He hoped passionately that they would never meet again. If they did, he knew he should not be able to find the strength to send her away. Then he stopped, catching his breath on a harsh sound of pain, as through the darkness he heard a footstep coming along the road, a footstep that he would have known if he had been lying in his grave. He pressed back into the shadows of the hedge, hardly breathing, and she came on, slowly, as if she were unspeakably wary, drew level with him, and passed. He let her go a little way, then he followed, keeping always to the lead keeping always to the hedges, and treading softly, so that she should not hear him. He followed her right into the garden of Green Gables, waited till she, till he knew she must have reached the house, until he saw the flicker of a light in her bedroom window. It had burned steadily for a few minutes, and once she came to the window, drawing aside the blind and looking out into the darkness, he saw the dainty outline of her head and her hair falling about her shoulders. Then she was gone, and after a moment the light went out. Lynn turned away, feeling as if he had watched his best beloved die, for he knew as surely as he knew that Lynn turned away, feeling as if he had watched his best beloved die, for he knew as surely as he knew that tomorrow's sun would rise again, that Pansy would make no more broken hearted appeals, that she had finished with him. And that is the end of um that is the end of chapter 17. Thank you for listening to The Matherson Marriage by Ruby M. Ayers with me, and I hope you return soon for the next chapter. Have a great day. Bye!